Hey guys, Dev here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to dismantle Seagate portable hard drives. Now the hard drive that I have here, uh, this one is a Seagate expansion, I think it is. Oh no, it says it's a, it's a backup plus desktop, not an expansion, sorry. This one is a Seagate backup plus hub. You can tell it's a hub by the two USBs in the front of it. These are for uh, powering things through. You can't actually like run another hard drive into this one, but you can power stuff. And this is a first generation Seagate backup. It says PS2 on it because I've been using it for uh, PS2 backups. And in fact, I have a PS2 backup video involving these hard drives in the near future. Now I've already disassembled and reassembled these once before, so it will be a bit easier for me to do um, a lot of the clasps are a bit stuck in when you do it the first time. And frankly, you will probably break a clasp or two doing this like on the inside of the machine. It's not a big deal. However, this will void your warranty. So you have to understand, if you don't want your warranty voided, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Let's put these ones aside and we'll do the first generation backup uh, first. This one's real easy. If you have one like this, if you have one that looks kind of like this, there's like, there's like four lights in the bottom and it kind of stands up. Seagate logo is right here. First of all, what you gotta do is basically unplug this bottom part. It just comes out. And what you have here on this bottom tray are the power and USB inputs, as well as the SATA inputs on the inside. And if you look inside of the case, you can see that there's actually the SATA inputs right there. You get a pry tool of some kind. I have a, an iFixit kit, so there's a pry tool. But you can also use um, guitar picks will do, or a credit card will do, but really a metal pry tool is the way to go. And you see this strip along the middle here? You have to pry this out first. So you're gonna have to get your pry tool in there and just you know, do this till it pops. And there we go, there's a pop. Yeah. This middle part, even though it's a bit unwieldy, it does come out first. Come on. And honestly, it is kind of stubborn. Even doing it a second time, it's pretty stubborn. I've also seen people have to do something like this. Sometimes you have to get like a flathead screwdriver and a hammer. And you just kind of talk it into place. This might damage your case though. Come on. I don't want to end up breaking this thing actually. There we go. It's, it's popping now. Once you have most of it out on the front, what you're going to want to do is go to the top and start doing the top. As soon as you get one tab up, the rest starts to come. See, there we go. This is my second time doing it and I'm having a rough time. You can only imagine what it's going to be like for your first time doing it. There you go. See that's, that's pretty much coming out now if you can see that. So. Yep. And, just, and there you go. Put that aside. Now what you want to do is look at the drive itself. See where the SATA ports are? You're going to do the side opposite of the SATA ports. So this side comes off. It's the same situation. Just wedge your tool in there, pull it up. Now some of the clips inside will snap and break as you do this, it's just kind of the name of the game. But unless you do this like 50 times, you'll always have enough clips to reattach this thing and put it back together because there's something like 50 clips. Now, when it comes to the back here, you see these various grates here? From all this information here, you count five. So one, two, three, four, five. There should be a clip right here. If I can just get in there. Come on. Yep, there it is, right where I said it was. And then from this side, you go one, two, three, four, 
five, six. Should be a clip right here. And there it is. Oops, I just bent it real bad. Well, I've had this thing for about eight years now. There's no way it's going back. Almost done. Oh, there we go. Done. So there it is. Now you have the actual drive inside. And when I, when I did this first myself, I was actually surprised to realize that every one of these portable hard drives is literally just a computer's hard drive in an enclosure that allows it to read SATA signals through a USB. I thought it was actually like its own hardware, but I guess not. Now, what's holding this in, and what holds it in on all Seagate models, are the drive is in like a, a metal enclosure, which I guess um, helps dissipate heat away from the drive when it's working really fast, and it's held into place by rubber stoppers. And I guess the rubber stoppers prevents vibration from dealing damage to the drive. So when you're taking this thing out, the only thing holding it in is just the friction of the rubber stopper. So, so you take your pry tool, stick it in underneath the drive, and just slowly inch it out. Get underneath the metal part. There it is. See? It's coming out already. Come on. Sometimes you can just shake it out, depending on the model, depending on the friction of the stopper. Come on. Come on. Let's go. There we go. Put that aside. Here's the drive. So you have these four um, rubber feet on them. That's what keeps it holding into place. For if you look inside here, you can see maybe the lighting will cooperate. You can see these notches. That's where the, um, the the rubber feet slide into place and hold it. So you take these off. Take off the four rubber feet. They just sit. Um, on these four screws. So you just get a, a cross screwdriver. There's one in the iFixit kit, thankfully. Unscrew these guys. Not that hard to unscrew. That flew right into the tripod. And now you have just a hard drive in a metal enclosure. And it should slide out pretty easily. So that's just so it's just sitting in this thing. It's pretty sharp, by the way. Like, don't mess around with this. And here it is. A Seagate 4000 gigabyte or 4 terabyte hard drive. And if you wanted, you could take this, slot it into a, a different computer, slot it into a different hard drive enclosure, uh, external enclosure, and you're good to go. Also, you can tell this is a first gen Seagate um, portable hard drive. The hard drives they usually use in these things now are Barracuda drives. So let's put this stuff aside and check out the other ones. Here is the Backup Plus. This is a, a five terabyte drive. Um, this one's actually pretty easy because this thing is only two pieces of plastic. There's the bottom and there's the case. The, the, this entire black case is one piece. So the only thing you have to do is get your pry tool, get in here and start prying up the bottom. It's not hard at all. This one's actually probably the easiest of the three to disassemble. It just comes up. And you might break a tab or two, so don't do this too often. And there it is. Put that aside. Actually, you can see. I've done this twice now after this one. You can see some of the tabs are starting to get bent there. So I wouldn't do this uh, too often. Oh, right there's another one right there. This is the same deal. It's held in place by rubber stoppers. This one I think you just flip upside down and let it slide out with gravity. And give it a shake. There it is. Stoppers off. And the same thing, four screws. As always, the metal's quite sharp, so be safe about it. And here we go. There's your 5,000 gig drive. It should just slide out, because this time, you'll notice that the, um, the SATA USB and power ports are directly inside the metal frame. So it's actually plugged into the SATA while it's in this case. So it's gonna take a bit to get it out. Come on, there it goes. You can see in there, that's the SATA port. The little board that handles the data transfer. And here is your 5,000 gig hard drive. All right. Now this one, the uh, Backup Plus Hub, is the newest drive that I have. And this one is a little bit complicated to take apart, but it should be no problem. What you want to do 
is notice that this drive has a consistent edge along the bottom of where the USB slots are here. It goes all the way around here, all the way along the front, and then it cuts along the back right here. So there's this edge that goes across the entire drive. So what you do, it's basically just the top of the drive plus the front. And you don't want to you want to break this front corner. So we're going to pull up the entire um, top of the drive first. Again, you might need to hammer and a screwdriver your way in for the first time. But I think I already have a crack here because I didn't properly put it back together. <laughs> Makes it easy for me. Let's get this up. What you're going to want to do is pull it up, up to the point that it goes, you get to the corner, but then stop and go along the back, pull up the back, and once you have the entire top pulled up, it just came off for me because I've already done it before, but what you want to do is not yank it up right away because the, the clips in the front are still in place. You want to take your pry tool and go along the front. So if you try to just bend it up while it's in place, you'll just bend it and it might break, right? So you want to actually try and get in there. It just came loose for me because I hadn't put it back together completely. Also, you can tell I've broken several several clips here uh, doing this. I don't know if you can see that. You can see some clips over there. So yeah, uh, don't do this too often, guys. This is the same deal. It's held in by the um, rubber stoppers. And what you can do is kind of shake, not, not so much this one because the front and the back are held in with these ports. So you do have to you know, try to get your tool in, pry it up, be as delicate as you can. It'll come out with not too much fuss. There we go. Now the innards of this one are a bit more involved because it has those USBs in the front to charge things, right? So same situation. We have the four rubber stoppers that can come off revealing four screws. That hasn't changed. But what is different is you have this aluminum tape. It kind of feels like aluminum tinfoil that's sticky on one side. And you can pry this back after the stoppers and the screws are out. And pry it back here. There it is. And now you'll notice that the hard drive is only being held in by that uh, SATA plug there. So you, can, you should be able to just, just pop it out. It just slides out. There's the SATA plug and you have this four terabyte Barracuda hard drive. Like I said, it's a Barracuda because this is a newer model. And here's what's interesting about this one is that you have this long board that the drive was sitting on top of. And I assume that board also handles a lot of the power stuff that goes to the, the two front USBs that are behind this foil right here. That's what powers things when you, like your phone or whatever when you plug it in. And I guess why the board is, is so much longer than the previous two is because it has to take power and USB data from the back and transfer it all the way to the front, because usually it's you know a quarter of the size in the other models. But that is how you disassemble a Seagate portable hard drive, guys. Um, I know I didn't cover all the Seagate models, obviously, these are just the ones that I have. And I know I didn't cover any other brand, like, like, a, like a, a WD or something. But the honest truth is, they're all probably pretty similar, in that you, you kind of get some, something that you can wedge into the cracks of it, you know, carefully pry up the tabs, um, be, be warned that it, it voids your warranty, and don't do it too often. Don't like keep constantly changing out hard drives in these things because eventually you, you will break all of the tabs and the enclosure will become unusable. You can switch out a hard drive once or twice, but I wouldn't recommend doing it any more than that. Hey, look at this piece, man. All three of the front tabs are like beat up on this piece. A bunch of them in the back are beat up. Like, I can't really do it anymore with this one. Once I put this one back together, it'll basically be set. So if you're having a hard time um, disassembling your Seagate hard drive, Hopefully this helps. I have another video coming shortly where I talk about why I've been doing this kind of thing because as you noticed, one of the hard drives was labeled PS2 because I was using it as um, a hard drive that loads all the PS2 ISOs off of it onto my, uh, my PS2 Slim. I have USB loaders for PS2, PS3, um, Wii, and Wii U. So basically what that means is that you hack your console so that it can detect drives through the USB port and then load up all the various games you want to play, and then the, the console, rather than reading a disc, will read it directly through the USB port from your USB drive. And I've actually been 
learning quite a bit about these drives and how they work in relation to some USB loader programs for various consoles and why some drives work when others don't, why there are compatibility issues. So I'm gonna probably do a video on that. But anyway, if you're just here, to learn how to disassemble a Seagate drive, that's how you do it. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I love you.